Is the postseason dream dead for the Nashville Predators? They drop a must-win game against the Winnipeg Jets over the weekend. Is there still some magic left in the tank, though? We'll see what the Preds need to do to get to the postseason. Plus, plus minus from our past week of Predators action, all today in the Locked on Predators podcast. Your Locked on Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Predators your first listen of the day. Every single day, we're your free daily Nashville Predators podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer at Penalty Box Radio, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer and editor at InsideThePreds.com. Also want to mention today's show is sponsored by HelloFresh. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash NHL60 and use code NHL60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Well, Anne, seems to be a fun ride while it lasted. It was, it, it's, it has been a super fun ride, but... Saturday, the ride came a little bit to a stop. Like this is the end. It might be the might be the end of the roller coaster. We're still waiting to see if we take another lap. The ride crashed into a brick wall. It uh, it was a bit it was a bit jarring. <laughs> it yeah. was a bit jarring. Yeah, maybe maybe that was too much uh, consp- compared to uh, where the Predators were at the beginning of the season. Maybe the ride just fell off the tracks and like a low point of the ride where it wasn't going very fast. Yeah, it just tipped over, and everybody on the ride went, "Ow!" Nobody on the ride died a horrible death. How about that? No, no, nobody. Yep, nobody had a panic attack waiting to be rescued. Nothing like that. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it's, more accurate, I think, of what happened Saturday. We should probably talk hockey before we get way too deep into the weeds <laughs> on this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so the Predators went up to Winnipeg. We had been talking about this game for basically the better part of a month now. We kept looking at that in the schedule and saying, huh, that's going to be a big game. Yeah. Uh, and it certainly was. The Winnipeg home crowd was absolutely on fire for this game. This felt like basically round one of the postseason mm-hmm. right here. You know, the players, you could tell there's a little bit of extra intensity on the ice. Uh, you know, uh, everybody was kind of on their A game, really focused in. Uh, it even felt like, and that the refs were kind of, you know, letting some stuff go yeah. that they might have called in, you know, a regular season, you know, middle of January kind of game uh, that maybe they wouldn't call in a close postseason game. You know, it kind of just everything had that playoff feel to it. And, you know, the Preds played well, you know, I, I, at least in, in my mind. I mean, certainly I think there's a lot of things they have to clean up. Winnipeg played better, but, yes. you know, the Preds were it, – it didn't look like they weren't up to the challenge or it didn't look like this was like absolutely, yeah, 100% they're like out of the – out of the right. box. Here. Yeah, and – Here's what you can say about this game at the end of it. The better team won that game that day. Winnipeg was the better team. But I agree with you. Let's give a shout out to this Nashville Predators team. The first period looked like it was going to be a very even match. The the Predators, I think, had maybe one more shot on goal in that first period. But it was very evenly matched first period. Then Winnipeg came back the second period. And once they got momentum... Once they got puck possession, once they kind of took it up another another notch, it really became up to UC Soros, I think, to handle a lot of that extra pressure. And eventually, you know, you can only hold up so long. But I agree with you. Overall, this was not a Nashville Predators team that looked completely unglued. Were they outplayed? They were outplayed. But we've seen the Nashville Predators with actual veteran Nashville Predators play games like this where they were outplayed and then they became unglued. 
Yeah. And you didn't see that from this team. You know, Winnipeg was the better team, th certainly through the sec second and third periods. But this Nashville Predators team did not become unglued. They stayed in the game. They didn't lose their wits about them. You know, they were just overwhelmed, but they stayed in it. So as disappointing as this game is for Nashville Predators fans who, like, look, this has been an amazing storyline to watch. The better team on Saturday won. That was Winnipeg's better game. They've had games that were a little bit more of a struggle for them, but they were the better team on Saturday. If you're a Nashville Predators fan, there's not much you should be – I guess mad about or mm -hmm. anything like that the way this season ended. Yeah. Um, you know, it's disappointing you're not gonna get to the postseason, and that's sad, but I think by the time we hit the end of February, that wasn't anybody's no. expectation at all. Uh and no. especially after that March 3rd trade deadline, and especially when guys like Roman Yossi and Matt Duchesne started falling out of the lineup. Yeah. So for the Predators to even be in this conversation, for them, uh, six days left before the end of the regular season to be playing in what was basically a playoff game, mm -hmm. a win and you control your fate kind of, you know, atmosphere that says something about this team. And there should absolutely be no disappointment. In fact, you know, I feel like the Predators – Making this little mini run at the end of this year, you know, fighting to stay in it despite, you know, everything that's happened this season. I feel like if anything, that should kind of change the perspective on this season overall. I mean, obviously, you know, you go into the season with this loaded team, you think this is, you know, we're going for it. We're putting every all our chips on the table. Yes. And, uh, you know, in, in the concept of that, yeah, the season's maybe as a whole as a failure, but I feel like you end with a little bit of a better taste in your mouth, seeing what, you know, this team could look like when, you know, you kind of build the core around these young growing players and, you know, maybe what happens if, you know, UC Saros keeps, you know, you know, keeps trucking the way he's been trucking yeah. the last week. I mean, just imagine, you know, this team with UC Saros with that, with just a little bit of, you know, a more polished team in front of them. Yeah. I mean, this is a team that can go back on that right rebuilding track fast. Well, when you talk about expectations, I think at the trade deadline, when we lost the pieces that we lost, you know, setting aside injuries right now, but just the pieces that they lost, the direction it appeared this team was going to head, the expectations I don't think were that the Predators would even necessarily be guaranteed making the playoffs next season. Yeah. Or this, you know what I'm saying? Like this was going to be a long slog. And so expectations have been exceeded. You know, we were joking ahead of the show, like, you know, if this is the Cinderella story, no, the glass slipper may not fit. But they went to the ball and they did the Cupid shuffle and they had a great time, you know, and now they know all the steps. So it's it's hard to it's hard to lose to Winnipeg. Can we just be really honest about that? It is hard right. to lose to Winnipeg um, in a game like that. But overall, if if you had told someone at the beginning of the season that that Nashville Predators team would lose to Winnipeg a week before the regular season ended and would probably be out of the playoffs, not a pitchfork in Tennessee to be found. I mean, that would be awful. But the changes that this team is making, this is actually a really encouraging place for this Predators team to land, regardless of what happens in these next three games. Yeah. Uh, so the Predators aren't officially out of yeah. it. Basically, here's the scenario. Uh, the Predators would need to, the, the long story short is they would need four more points over these last three games uh, than the Winnipeg Jets would have, which means, you know, the easy answer is the Preds would need to win out mm -hmm. uh, and the Jets would need to only win one of their last three. That seems like that's the most plausible thing uh, because, you know, Preds winning the last three also includes a win over the Calgary Flames tonight. 
yeah. which that is equally a must-win game. Uh, I believe the Jets have San Jose tonight. No help from the schedule there. Uh, and basically, it, it's if I believe if the Predators lose and the Jets win, uh, that's officially officially yeah. it for Nashville. Yeah. Um, so, hey, I mean, let's at this point, why not just see like how the uh, how how the train keeps going, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Like, who knows? Yeah. I mean, at, at this point, we we didn't expect to be here, so uh, no expectation either way. No, you never know. You never know. Uh, but it seems extremely unlikely. It does. Uh, at this point. Yes. Uh, more on this in a second, including plus minus, where we go through the last week of Predators hockey, give a pluses to the stuff we liked, minuses to the stuff we don't like. Coming up in just a second. But first, I want to mention today's show is brought to you by Fan Duel Sportsbook. Grand slams, no hitters, double plays. Baseball is back, people. There's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And that's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. There's lots of different things you can choose from. You can pick whether Aaron Judge picks off where he left off with a home run. You can go, you know, a pitcher to go over, you know, five, six strikeouts in a game. Or you can build an SGP with your favorite matchup of the day. So don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, Ann, it's Monday, which means it's time for plus minus. This is where we go through the past week of Nashville Predators hockey. Pluses to the stuff that we like, that we want to highlight. Minuses to the stuff that we think needs improvement. And start us off with a plus, shall you? I shall. So I'm going to start off with a plus and an apology. It should not surprise you that my plus then goes to Kevin Lankinen. The goaltender that we will constantly apologize to for doubting this signing when it happened. Uh, Lankinen's performance, I especially want to shout him out against the Vegas Golden Knights last Tuesday. It was such an impressive performance in net. He really helped the Predators get important two points. But I also want to shout him out because he was coming back in to play after his previous game was March 19th. So it had been a stretch and it was the game against the New York Rangers in which they scored like four goals in the first 10 minutes. And he was pulled for UC Saros. I think it's very challenging to go. It's it's challenging to be UC Saros's backup in the sense that you're going to go long stretches without games. Especially, um, but, especially this late in the season. And the, yes. The Preds are. Yeah, you know, um, and so it's a challenge to hop back in there. I think it's a challenge to get back in there after a long stretch when your last game was not the game that you wanted to have. Um, And he just is making the most of his chance. John Hines talked earlier in the week about Kevin Lincoln and it just really was speaking about how important he is to this team on and off the ice, that just his vibe in the locker room has been so helpful. But also, he's kind of getting to be UC Soros, and UC Soros is now the Pecorine. You know, Lankinen is not, he does not want to be a backup goaltender in the NHL. He wants to be a starter, but he is taking advantage of this really great opportunity to learn from Ben Vanderklok and from UC Soros to get his game better. He signed for another year, which I think is great. But he is investing in becoming a full-time goaltender. I think the Preds are very, very fortunate to have him. And his performance against Vegas, you know, like shout out and fat plus and and just, again, a really, you know, heartfelt, really sorry. That was our bad about questioning the signing of Kevin Lincoln. And so fat plus to KL. Yeah, I feel like we can't uh, enough go back and be like, <laughs> we're wrong. We're wrong. Like, yeah. <laughs> if we had a little ticker across the bottom, it would say, our bad. Love you, Kevin yeah. Lankinen. Yeah, our bad. That, that was a good signing. That was our bad, yeah. 
Uh, to me, and I'm going to give a plus to, I guess, the defense, but this is an overall team effort. The blocked shots. Come on. 26 blocked shots on Thursday against the Carolina Hurricanes. 25 on Saturday against the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, I know people say block shots is an overrated stat and I, I you know I get the reasoning behind it if you're a good team you should have the puck at all times mm-hmm. but I still think especially for this version of the Nashville Predators you know you gotta get some help wherever you can get it and the defense put their body on the line uh Jake Livingstone four block shots yeah. Dante Fabro four block shots on Saturday Ryan McDonough had four on Thursday and three three uh the other night against winnipeg you saw guys like luke evangelista and phil tomasino start picking up some block shots late in the game uh zach sanford had three so you know blocking shots hurts and oh my god i don't know if you're if anybody listening is aware of what a hockey puck feels like when you hold it <laughs> in your hand uh but that coming 105 110 miles per hour mm-hmm. at you that kind of hurts. Oh, and so, you know, it's, you know, a, a part of a game, but it takes a lot of courage to go out there and keep throwing your body instead of the puck. You know, how easy would it be to just be like, uh, UC's got this one. Right. You know, the, the man with mattresses all over his body, <laughs> is, you know, maybe he's got this one better. And, you know, if the Predators and John Hines mentioned it. After that Carolina game, where we kind of asked him what happened, he said, you know, straight out, you know, you have a lot of guys sacrificing their body and putting on the line to block shots, take hits, you know, everybody is kind of buying in and, you know, trying to do what they can to will this team in and block shots are a big part of it. Plus, that's one less save UC Saros needs to make, you know. A, a chance at a rebound taken away, right. you know, a chance to kind of clear the zone because, you know, the puck doesn't rebound or bounce back out where you think it's going to, you know, instead it's, you know, high in the zone or whatever. So, you know, this, this to me is an important part of the game and you saw the predators step up when it mattered most with some big block shots. Yeah. And it's not just the defense that's doing it. Like you were talking about uh, Tommy Novak blocked a shot the other day. And I was mm-hmm. like, please, you know, like I, I love that they're all in and I love that this team is like, we'll do whatever it takes. Yeah. We will do whatever it takes, but golly, it, it does not seem like a fun skill to have. No. Nobody wants to excel at that. And yet there's Ryan Patrick doing let's, it all. Let's not, uh, let's not do an experiment where you block a shot. How about that? Nope. Just we know that it hurts and y'all can just take our word for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll we'll do that. Yeah. Uh and you can't all be sunshine and rainbows no. in Smashville, can it? Let's have a minus. All right. So here we go. I'm gonna just go ahead and say the minus. Uh and that is the predators just cannot score enough goals. Last week, the Predators only scored seven goals. Now, that was enough goals in some games to win. Um, but that was seven goals in four games. You know, the Pred- this Predators team, there are moments where, you know, Tommy Novak and Luke Evangelista and these young players are generating great chances, but some of them are not finishing. Same thing on the power play. We've seen them generate chances. They're getting established in the offensive zone and they're creating chances, but they're not finishing them. And so I think that is something that the Nashville Predators are going to need to take a look at. I do want to ask you about this though, because I've seen some people online say like, if you look at what the Predators have done this week, it's very obvious that they need to go out and they've got to get a quality shooter. Do the Predators have a quality shooter that maybe is injured or do you think the Nashville Predators need better than Philip Forsberg, Matt Duchesne, Roman Yossi. Like, how how big of a problem would this be with those three in the lineup? I'm I curious. I don't know if better is the right word. I would say okay. you need more help in that department. Mm-hmm. You know, Philip Forsberg's probably your best shooter. 
Yes. At this point, but I would agree. Know, it, it's not like, you know, Alex Ovechkin. I mean, nobody's Alex Ovechkin, but it's not like, you know, somebody who's just going to, you know, sit from the point and, you know, fire rockets from the circle. That's not quite his game. Yeah. Um, you know, I would say the Predators need a finisher that's kind of like that. Um, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how you go out and get one. I mean, they're not, you know, exactly growing on trees. You know, there's only a few yes. people who are kind of just like have that ability to just, you know, pick the corners of the net. Um, and yeah, but, but yeah, I mean, I would say, let's say that Cody Glass is for sure on the team next year and Tommy mm-hmm. Novak is for sure. And Phil Tomasino is for sure on the team. I would imagine at this point, Luke Evangelista. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there is going to be a week's worth of discussion if he's not on this team to start the beginning of next year. Uh, You know, and they're all guys that like to create a lot of chances. I'd say Evangelista is probably closer to that finisher than maybe somebody Mm -hmm. like Tomasino or Glass. But, you know, you need somebody at the end of those playmakers to make yes. plays, you know, and we, we talked about that, you know, kind of even dating back to this season, you know, you, you had guys like, you know, Matt Duchesne, you know, making these great plays and, and getting into the zone and setting stuff up and then passing it to somebody who just shoots it right at the chest or yes. nobody on the other end of a really good pass. You know, we need somebody to kind of complete those plays. Mm-hmm. And I think what you said is right. They don't grow on trees. So the notion that you're going to go out and you're going to get, you need, you know, you're going to get somebody not necessarily of the caliber of a Connor McDavid, but you're going to get somebody whose finishing is going to take the team to the next level. I wonder if it's not just a finisher, but if it's a combination, I, I don't know that there are, like you said, I don't know that there are that many quality finishers out there that the predators can go get in the off season. I wonder if they're going to have to tinker and make it a combination that leads to that. At least not in the sense that we're talking about, which is somebody just go back and just, you know, fire shots from the point or anything. Yeah. Now there's people that can get to the right space at the right time and crash the net and kind of get to open spaces uh, and those are fantastic. We can need some more of those. But again, that's I don't think one person is going to be yeah. like the at the end all be all to that. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it's going to be a combination for sure. Yeah. Interesting offseason discussion we'll have about maybe who we should add. Yeah. Um, all right. And it can't all be doom and gloom. I should and, hope uh, not. The Predators thing, shall we? So let's talk about a plus and let's talk about uc sorrow shall we come on he's I mean... not he's not gonna win the vezina trophy this year and at this point looking at the stats uh i'm not even sure if he gets nominated at this point uh which is kind of sad yeah. but if there was ever a case for you know a a goaltender to be the most to be considered among the most valuable players in the league. Mm -hmm. It's what UC Soros has done over this past stretch of the season. I mean, it's, it's incredible. It really is incredible. And, you know, he's, he's stolen a lot of wins this season for the Nashville predators. He's kept the predators in games that they had no business being in and this entire late run doesn't happen without UC Saros. Yes. And it is, it's sad that the Predators missed the playoffs. It's sad that it's coming in the course of this rebuilding because this should go down as one of the best goaltending seasons in Nashville Predators history. Mm -hmm. when you know especially when you consider you know his rough start and how he's had to come out and absolutely be near perfect every single game and he's done that he's been near perfect pretty close to almost every single game and he's had some a little bit of rough stretches but 
He's been good. He's, He's been good. Really good. <laughs> yeah. He's good. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, though, you say that because it seems like there are some people who feel like actually that is a minus overall, that UC Soros is not that his performance is a minus because no one can argue that Soros is absolutely he's having a fantastic season and he really is a fantastic talent, but that his performance covers up a number of sins that people aren't paying attention to because of this fun run. What do you think about that? Is it but, but isn't that the point of goaltending? Thank you. Take it home, friend. Take yeah, it home. Isn't that the point of goaltending is you want somebody that's going to erase the mistakes yeah. in your bad games? Like somebody who's going to be, you know, stepping up and be like, okay, if the team is off, don't worry, because we still have somebody who's going to go and survive, you know, yeah. 45 shots and keep the Predators in it. And then all of a sudden, all you need is one goal to you know, turn yes. the tables on this entire thing. Isn't that the point of goaltending? Yeah, I feel that way too. I'm like, you have to have this. You have to have this caliber of goaltending to win in the NHL. So it's, I find it interesting that some of the takes after the Winnipeg game were UC Soros is just a Band-Aid covering up a, a myriad of sins for the Predators team. And I'm thinking that's what every quality team in the playoffs pretty much has yeah you know I mean, is a goaltender that does that yeah i mean you, you look at the winnipeg jets <laughs> hello they're Connor get, they're, How are they you? look like they're getting into the postseason do you think that team that they feel it out there is you know doing gangbusters or do you think connor hellebick kind of has something to do with that yes you know yeah. like it, it, let's look back at some of the early nashville predators you know playoff years hey remember the year they got their first playoff win uh, you know, against the Anaheim Ducks and then went out and almost took down the Vancouver Canucks. Mm -hmm. You think that team was good? <laughs> or do you think yeah. Pecorine was a mummy style bandage wrap that was yeah. covering a lot of the shortcomings with that team? Yeah. Like, again, I mean, this is that's what goaltending is. You know, your goaltending gives you a chance to stay in games you shouldn't be in. And, you know, let's let's step it back a little bit. You know, do you think the Colorado Avalanche are perfect every night? Do you think, you know, the Tampa Bay Lightning over the course of their three consecutive cup berths, do you think they've been near perfect every night? No, they've had some absolute stinkers. But guess what? They have Andre Vasilevsky, one yep. of the best goaltenders in the league. You know, I watched a game in which the Detroit Red Wings, the Red Wings, just absolutely beat the crap out of the lightning. You're just out, out shooting. I think, you know, it wound up being like, you know, 46 shots on goal for the Red Wings, as opposed to like 23 for the lightning or something like that. Andre Vasilevsky like stopped 45 of those 46. Yeah. You know, so, you know, that overcame an off night, you know, you have Alexander Gorgiev, who is absolutely staying on his yeah. head for Colorado. Yes. Right now, all those, you know, Rangers teams, you know, over the 2000s or, you know, the 2010s, uh, they, you know, survived some rough years in terms of talent in front because of Henrik Lundqvist. Mm -hmm. You just go through history and there's, you know, that's that's what a goaltender is. And you want that Band-Aid. You yeah. want that Band-Aid to be like, OK, as long as we have this guy, we're going to have a chance and now it's like, you know, I'd say the goal for the Nashville Predators for maybe the next couple of years is just to get into the playoffs. Yes. And UC Soros gives you that chance. I, I hate the notion of you have to absolutely take a step backwards. You have to bottom out and you have to trade UC Soros or else you're not oh. really going to get any better. Yeah. Um, I dis I disagree with that notion. I disagree with the notion that you absolutely have to hit rock bottom in order to form a cup contending team. Come I on. think you can, I think you can find a way there's other ways other than tanking to escape that creamy middle as people like to call it in the NHL, you know, the worst quote unquote worst place to be. If you yes. are a team is that creamy middle. I think if you have a good goaltender, and you have the draft capital the Predators have, you have an absolutely great chance to build your way up 
instead of having to slide down just to, and then rebuild just to get back to the creamy middle. I mean, who do you think is in a better position right now? Like who has more talent in their organization, Chicago or Nashville? Yep. Arizona yep. or Nashville? Who, do, who does, who does Chicago have to build around yeah. right now? A couple of draft picks who haven't played a pro game yet. Yeah. Like who does Nashville have a lot of young, talented players who have gone out there with NHL experience and have proven they can help a team win a game. Yeah. Like who's closer. Tell me who's closer. I love this. I love this because you see people saying, you know, you got to trade Soros in this off season. If you really want the predators, you know, you're, you're going to need to trade Soros. You're going to waste his best years. And I'm like, first of all, we're talking hockey years. Soros has several good years left. And I think where the Nashville predators are is a good place to be if you're UC Soros, because these are not going to be totally wasted years. Do I think the Predators are going to be cup contenders next season? Probably no, but I am not willing to write off this Predators team, A, because of what we've seen from the young players already this season, B, obviously because UC Soros, and C, there is so much draft capital that the Nashville Predators have right now. This offseason could be lit you yeah. just don't know what this team is going to look like when it comes time for the regular season next season so i don't think this is going to look like a, like you said you've got a tank and then work your way back up that's not where the predators are yeah and that can change the situation very true absolutely uh because hey the predators situation changed very dramatically <laughs> <laughs> and a period from February 23rd to, to March 10th or even, you know, wherever we are now, all of a sudden it looks like the Predators were destined for this long sluggish rebuild. And then here we are accelerated things a little bit. Yeah. Things can, can you change. imagine now if they traded Tommy Novak, like, you know, four yeah. or five months ago, if they had traded Tommy Novak, the fan base would be like, oh, Tommy Novak. Can you imagine? <laughs> Well, the yeah, and, but, but but Anne, Tommy Novak helps the Predators win games. We can't have that. I know. Well, maybe he and UC Soros could be a package. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. for one first round draft pick. Oh goodness! Right. Lots of off season fun will be had by the Predators. I'm, I'm sure, but... sure we will vent about every single one of them. Yes. Uh, Anne, where can people find your work? You can find my work online at insidethepreds.com. You can find me on Twitter at ANK underscore Mama on Ice. You can find me at penaltyboxradio.com. Follow me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. Also, be sure to follow the podcast at LO underscore Predators. However you're listening to us right now, whether you are watching us on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcasting platform, hit that subscribe button, please. It helps us out. That's going to do it for us on today's Locked on Predators podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen of the day. We'll be back tomorrow with Preds Flame to recap. We'll see you then.